one time and I drank gallons and gallons of cranberry juice while sitting in salt water for a few weeks. And uh, and I've really turned off to cranberry juice for the rest of my life now. What were the circumstances of this? Well, time? I went on that vacation with with Chiz or whatever and smoked my sh my brain in for a solid <laughs> sure. seven, eight days. And then I got back home and they're like, oh, your federal probation starts in like five weeks. We'll we'll test you at, you know, what on, on this day. And I'm like Googling. They're like, yeah, six weeks and you're fine. And I'm like, but it's five weeks. <laughs> and so they're like. Well, here's what you need to do. And I'm just like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm in this salt. I don't even know if it helped. I don't even know. Do you if take it pills? Uh, pills are nonsense. I didn't. Okay. I thought, I, for, for what I gathered from the internet, uh -huh. it seemed like losing fat, yeah. like literally losing mm -hmm. some fat that holds on to, to mm -hmm. I don't know, drug markers or something, um, and sweating out and and you know pissing out and cranberry juicing yourself. I felt was going to be my best bet. And that's what I did. I don't have any scientific proof that it worked. I'll know. I don't even know that I passed the drug test. I just know that they didn't make a deal of it. They tested me and then we moved on. You probably passed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't even know if what I was doing was technically wrong or if they'd made an, an issue of it. But I didn't, you don't ask. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You don't go, hey, by the way, what if I fail my drug test? And like, Do you have a right. reason to believe you will be failing your drug test? We would like you to come in and speak in front of a grand jury about why you thought you might. <laughs> like, oh, no. Yes. That way it's, you know, we, if we catch you in a lie. You're in real trouble. It's like, I don't even know the truth anymore. I'm so scared. I don't want Man. that scenario to lay mm -hmm, down. Mm -hmm. So instead, I was just in a bathtub drinking a half a gallon of cranberry juice a day for a couple of weeks. <laughs> and I you're just like so grimacing. Much. You hate it the whole time. Like, And, oh, and so, this so is, so don't imagine like ocean spray cran apple because we're looking for the medicinal cranberry juice. All right. This is that dark purple shit that comes in the fancy jar Even it like was that. expensive <laughs> <laughs> dude i failed the drug test for a internship when i was in college i think i was like a sophomore in college or something and my dad was like hey i got you an internship at this fucking uh business this like bank or some shit and i was like okay and so i didn't stop smoking weed <laughs> until like, <laughs> until like you know three, four weeks before it, you know, because it was, it was a quick run because I didn't know until like four weeks before that I was going to have that, like this was an opportunity for me. And so I stopped as soon as I found out and it gave me like a month and I was like, there's no way with the amount of weed I've been smoking, I'll be clean in a month. There's just no way. And so okay. I was like, I didn't know the cranberry trick. I did hear from people because when you go to head shops or at least at the time, there would be like the bongs and all that shit. And then in that uh, front display case it'd be like clean your system 420 like weed out you know extreme and like even in my like kind of desperate college days i'm like there is no chance this is a real thing that you yeah. can just buy at the store and so i just looked online and it was like you want to be super hydrated and cardio lose some fat so i that lost the some other fat thing, did super some cardio yeah hyper hydration i was unbelievably hydrated for Freshman. like a month straight yeah the hydration is it for the duration of that four weeks or test day on test day in particular you want to be yeah. pissing clear you want any like mm. if there is anything you want it diluted by how much um water is is, is in that piss like yeah. you want you want it to be your cleanest day ever yeah. My, yeah. my pee was like j drinkable I like had it was, <laughs> it was that I almost pissed clear. myself in the waiting room. I was <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I remember I was sitting in the waiting so room at the at the drug place and I was like Oh, uh, I was thing. all nervous. Yeah. You want it to be um like your first little bit of piss. You don't want it to be like the bottom of your kidney. Oh, I didn't know that. You don't uh. want to like because some people are I, I I'm almost positive that's what I read. Um in any case, I did whatever I was supposed to on the day. I remember it was so embarrassing. I um I wanted an extra day, so I misremembered which day I was supposed to go in for drug testing. I accidentally misremembered accidentally, and so <laughs> and so a very angry, like scary lady, federal person called me the next day. She's like, "Where are you?" And I'm like, "Oh, what well, that was today? 
thought it was tomorrow. Mm. I could have sworn it was today. Tuesday, Wednesday, they I'm sound really alike. Yeah, you know? right now. Oh, fuck. I got, just, <laughs> I got stressed out about the drug test, so I got high. <laughs> so I was like, I'll, I'll be there tomorrow, first thing. I don't take this lightly, madam. You know, I apologize profusely, and I got an extra day that way for, by accident. Well, yours and, was but, like what, a real real stakes mine was a, a fucking scary drug test yeah I, uh mm. the first you i walked by one guy and he was like you here for the breathalyzer and i'm like i don't know <laughs> 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 um i don't know because he had like the big breathalyzer not that street level shit mm -hmm. he looked like we, you were about to like put on a pressure mask and an f-16 <laughs> like it was this big fucking thing with multiple hoses coming out and i was like i, I don't know am i allowed to drink i have no idea I would have said yeah. yes to accept that because if they're like, do you want the breathalyzer? I'd be like, yes. Also give me a cocaine test and a meth <laughs> test because when they see this list, I want it to be a lot of successes before the potential. <laughs> okay. <failure. laughs> okay. Wow, hey, I got a 90. On. Yeah. <laughs> That's an A minus. Do great on a curve here, Judge. But, um, no. And I no, was, uh, anyway, I was, I got the the email <laughs> from the, the internship lady like very soon after my dad was like, hey, you should check out this, this internship. And already she was like, it was probably like early April and it was going to start like early May, something like that. And I or it was going to start in like June. And I was like, or she told me, so we're going to have you come in in three and a half weeks and give your, you know, your urine sample. And then once that's all taken care of, you can start when it was like four, four and a half weeks after that. Uh, is this a good date for you, April the 26th, to go in and give a urine test? And it's like April 2nd. And I'm like, I'm busy April 26th. How's May 30th? <laughs> like, I, I literally proposed an absurd like, like range She should out have there. read between the lines. Of course she did. And she was like, uh, no, we can't delay it by five weeks, but you can do it later that week. And I'm like, all right, April 28th instead. So I'm guzzling water. I'm drinking water, just <laughs> trying my best. I'm, I'm running, doing cardio, losing some fat, really trying to set myself up for success here because I had been, that was what my sophomore year of college, I had been smoking every day a lot. And so, that, <laughs> like, so that, that, that'll I've do it. I've been smoking like always. I've been smoking a good amount of time. Only See, that matters like, too. Like, that like, matters quickly a lot. Quickly interject. Yeah. I've researched that as well. I'm sure you have too. There is a difference between doing what I had done in this little one week isolated vacation of marijuana and just being a daily user. Like, like it soaks in after a while to some degree. It seems. Yeah, you become super saturated with with THC <laughs> and all of your lipid <laughs> cells. And so I I go in to give my drug test like three and a half weeks later or whatever. In my head, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to pass. But I also have this like maybe you've drank enough water to fool it. And so I'm sitting yeah. there like about to piss myself. They call me back. Uh, I think you were right about like the first piss thing because they told me they're like, don't pee directly into the cup, pee into the toilet for a second and then pee into the cup. I did that because I didn't know they were trying to bamboozle me. And mm -hmm. so I peed like a week later, I get an email from the uh, internship lady and she was like, uh, we received the results of your test and you tested positive for THC and then was like, regards, like the, the, you know, sign off and everything. And I was like, well, there's nothing to lose now. And yeah. so I just, I emailed back and I was Wait. like, oh, that's interesting. What's the next step of the onboarding procedure? <laughs> <laughs> like I really, I really tried to, you know, play. Wow. That point. Yeah. I, I like, oh, what do I have to lose? And That's so like one where you're like, guys, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Read the email. Do you want? Do you want to click send? Do you want me to do it? <laughs> I, I did show it to my friends after the fact, and they they got a laugh out of it. And she responded back, and she was like, uh, "I don't know if you understand. Unfortunately, we're unable to move forward with that." Uh, due to the you know, THC to positive. And it was like, all right, well, I guess I'm not not interning there this summer. Did, you, did your father give you a hard time? Uh, not as hard a time as I would have thought. Okay. Like, he kind of just gave me like a, God, Taylor, like that kind of thing. And I was like, well, I didn't know. And I was get, smoking weed, you know, so I need more lead time, Dad. Like, yeah, Dad, this is really <laughs> yeah. on you. This is really a you thing. And so, like, you thought I could pass a that. drug test in three weeks? Can you? <laughs> he's like, yes, I can. I haven't smoked weed since the seventies or whatever the fuck. And so, yeah, that I failed that drug test. Didn't didn't get that internship. Got a different one though. Don't remember where. But 
it. Yeah, like, that was uh, it. That was kind of like embarrassing. That. Yeah. What? I uh, I saw a clip from that old episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and I do mean old at this point. It's twenty years now. Uh, season two, episode two, I believe, where uh, the Jewish guy b buys the neighboring property, yeah. and it turns out the way the lines are drawn, they don't even own half their bar. the The property next door does, and the Jewish guy. He's like, the new line is here. It's like, you just can't come in here and take our land. Yeah. So they dress up as Palestinian terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> and they they start filming like a, a terror video and they realize that it's not a good look. But they end up shooting like an RPG or something. No, no, they like they start a fire. They they <laughs> they hate crime him by the end and burn his burn the Jewish man's place down. Yeah. Yeah. I need Kyle, we should do that where you educate me on films. And then we like I, record uh, some audio to, to release to fans about it because Hutch doesn't know this. My my movie knowledge is so lacking that it. I'm really, putting that together. Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> it 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 upsets yes, Kyle. How did yeah. you not, have you really not seen Terminator Two? I haven't seen Terminator One either. So we wow, it, that's like, remarkable, isn't it? Jesus, Terminator Two is probably like it's a top three action movie all time in my opinion. Easy, like groundbreaking special effects. Arnold's greatest film. Uh, bl biggest blockbuster. It founds a multi-billion dollar franchise. Linda Hamilton being one of the the, the most impressive female body transformation ever, maybe. Uh, she probably got clean. ripped. Yeah. Probably clean. She's doing real, like, uh, chin-ups. Uh, like, 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 raw. Like, like, looking amazing. Doesn't wear a bra the whole fucking movie. So badass. Um, yeah. And it, it's great. It's a wonderful movie. I watched uh, that movie, the director's cut, one time when I was tripping my fucking face off on acid <laughs> and i didn't realize that because they added like 20 minutes of scenes yeah. that i had never seen before so i was tripping out like am i adding these scenes in my mind <laughs> like i had like a whole like experience but there's dude, a really good scene where you i think it's a deleted scene where you see like cyberdyne in a boardroom designing the arnold schwarzenegger t-800 terminator and they sh and they show the the they show Arnold's body and everything. They're like, fucking perfect, Dave. And and they, you look and the, Arnold's one of the scientists. It's like, oh, they just made it look like Dave. Dave, you're perfect to be look, be a Terminator model. And he goes, thank you very much. I I knew that it'd be a good look. You know, I'm a big stocky fella. And it's Arnold speaking with that country accent. And I didn't like, oh, see that. I don't remember they're that. They're like, uh. we might tweak the voice, though. Why? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't do a good job. <laughs> so fucking good. Well, they, they like... You know they, they they do voiceover and everything, but uh, that movie. So that movie was rated R, and my parents were pretty strict about what yeah. movies I got to see. And it came out when I was like nine, and my whole family was gonna go to see it. And my mom initially was like, "I don't, I'm not comfortable with Sean going. You have to stay home." And I threw a fit. I was bawling in my room, and my dad comes in. He just opens the door and he goes, "I got I, you can go." And I, dude, I fuck and yeah. So <laughs> seeing, seeing that movie in theaters as like a nine year old was just like a spiritual experience it was so, it was one of my fondest movie going experiences of all time easy See, I, like, I, I can empathize with like the spiritual nine ten year old experience because that's how old i was when fellowship of the ring came out in like 99 oh, yeah, yeah. like i remember watching that movie in theaters with my friend's dad and my friend because my my dad my parents said no shit about it they just were like hey tim and his dad are going you want to go with him and i'm like sure it's a free it's, it's a movie and I remember watching and like seeing Lurts and the Urukai and the epicness yeah. of it, and like not having never experienced a movie like that where I'm like, there's a whole world, there's a whole world that I can become <laughs> weirdly fascinated with throughout my formative years here. And it happened, and I did. Yeah, and like it was so good. I need to rewatch Lord of the Rings. Do you know, I even I need to Terminator ask you if you watched Rings of Power? Uh, no, I did not watch it. Mm. Didn't watch it. No, we when I when I found around. out they well, weren't. This is following the now, lore i was last like time oh, you were fuck. on last time you were on you're like do you guys watch rings of power and we're like no it's too woke and you were like oh you're lost and <laughs> oh did i mention it last time <laughs> yeah 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 i think you know, it, i would like, give it like let's i'll give it like an eight eight you know 8.5 it's fun it's it's a fun, yeah. it's like a but but they weren't allowed to adapt like the whole deal that they made was that they had to do like original stuff yes. but it, but it also but it also had to be like in the spirit of token so he had like the family was working with them to make sure that they were like quote unquote lore friendly, but they had to like do original stuff. That's going to rub some people the wrong way. I understand that people don't want to watch it, but it was, yeah. it was fine. I mean like, and, and the visual effects are like top notch for a TV show. It's like one of the best looking shows easy. 
But, yeah, uh, they they can, spent uh, a king's ransom on it. Like I remember, it's, it was like almost Game of Thrones level expensive, wasn't it? Wasn't it more expensive? Oh, maybe Didn't, even more. I, I thought they spent over a billion dollars. Speaking of the thing. Game of Thrones thing, I I probably will eventually watch House of the Dragon, but oh, like, I had awesome, I felt so dude. we like just so, so in yeah. I remember you saying it was good and to watch it, but it just it feels like I'm forgiving them for the end of Game of Thrones if I watch yeah. it. And I don't yeah. forgive them for the end of Game of Thrones. Uh -oh. All Matt, of those yeah. prophecies meaning nothing. Matt Smith is fantastic. Is that his name, by the way? Matt Smith, the um, yeah, Doctor Who guy. He's so good. If you, uh, but though, if if you're squeamish about like violent births, then this is not the show for you. There's so there's like, many violent births. <laughs> there's like three <laughs> that are just horrifyingly graphic. Like I think genuinely disturbing. To I yeah. think they're what they're wanting to solidify, mm -hmm. and, and this is a little bit in the books that that men, um, a man's job is to shed blood on a battlefield, and a woman's job is to shed uh, blood in the birthing bed. Like like like, and and these women, it's they die left and right giving yeah. birth because it was an incredibly dangerous thing to do for most of human history. Yeah, that makes Br sense. Brutal. It's brutally violent. Yeah. There's and there's three. And they're like, like nine episodes arc. Like, oh, it's in three violent births in so nine episodes. So in one a lot third of, of the episode, there is a horribly violent <laughs> birth. Yeah. yeah. What show are we talking about? House of the Dragon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. saw that. We're talking yeah. about Taylor's um, um, lacking movie repertoire. Drugs came up a minute ago. Hutch, have you ever done Molly? Oh, yeah. I have heard. I, I was briefly interested. I was, I've never done it. And I was like, this seems like... I don't know, something I should check out. And then I heard that it's like borrowing your next three days of happiness, having it all tonight, and then fighting depression till the middle of the week. It, what's your opinion on that thought? Um, I don't think, I think that's, my experience wasn't like that. Um, y There's definitely a come down and it's nice to have some cannabis or cannabis products like when you're doing the come down because it just kind of helps to, 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 to relax and everything. I don't think that's true. I don't think you're going to be fighting depression. Like you would have, you can do, you don't have to do a lot of MDMA. Like you can take a small amount and have a really mm. good experience. If you do a lot of MDMA, then you're probably going to have like a rough, like couple of days following. But if you do it in moderation, I don't think, I don't yeah. think that's going to be an issue. I don't know. Has anybody here tried Molly? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've done yeah. Molly. Like I, oh. I never knew anyone who did it like I, I haven't done it since college and i just did it like before i think i think it was skrillex like 2010 at uh mizzou that i before that show no it was pretty lights it was pretty lights 2010 that was an awesome show i think it was awesome even with, with i was on a bunch <laughs> of molly so, like it was it's one of those drugs that like i i bet it would fuck with you really badly if someone if you're doing it all the time but mm -hmm. I didn't know anyone in my world who did it any time other than like before a concert. And even then, like I never would have sought it out. It was like one of my buddies happened to have some. I was like, hey, take some of this before you go to the show and drink a bunch of water to stay hydrated. And nobody, had a great nobody can describe their high, right? It, it, it's just hard to put into words. But can you attempt what Molly I, does? I had I was in a good mood, a fantastic mood. The the music like it was it could just be that the bass was so heavy and hard but the energy was excellent there there was no feeling of like crowdedness in the in the crowd and everybody jumping around and everything like i was literally that guy one of the guys because a lot of people are on molly i'm sure where you know there's the main core of people who are in front of the stage and you know, pretty lights is playing and everything and then there are the people like kind of off to the side in like a more open space not directly in front of it and they're just kind of going wild vibing and dancing i was one of those guys yeah not a not a lick of shame or embarrassment i was feeling it and i i didn't care i, I just felt so good <laughs> just dancing around it was it, great it, it depends on what if you have it on an empty stomach or a full stomach so like if you if you take it on a full stomach the come up might be a little bit protracted like it might take like an hour and a half if you mm -hmm. if you eat like two hours before you take it i think that's technically ideal um what will happen is like 30 minutes into it you might feel like a little bit of anxiety like it'll feel kind of like that's what they call it the come up it's mm -hmm. like a feeling of like anticipation excitement anxiety yes. and you, maybe you start getting kind of tingly and then you're just it's just a euphoric feeling 
you you love everybody around you you know you feel a sense yeah. of like connection <laughs> i think the original purpose of the drug was it was meant to help with like um couples therapy like i think that was the mm. original purpose for when the drug was that makes sense developed and now of course they're like you probably already know but they're you they're experimenting with mm. treating ptsd and 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 depression which i can totally they, yeah, they give it. I, I can't bears imagine to to getting like I can't imagine getting in an argument with someone in the space I was in mm -hmm. at that concert. Like you're right, that was a good way to put it. Like you're just everybody's vibing and you're just getting along, having a fun time together. And there's a bit of like body stuff too. Like your skin feels kind of tingly, so like that's why pe people will you know they'll like a lot of people will like play with each other's hair and give each other massages it's yeah. because like your physical sensations are heightened. But you're not high like. Like if you smoke weed, there, it doesn't produce the same kind of. It's hard to explain because it's like you're high, but you're not high. It's like it's it it is a very different. It's unlike, it's unlike marijuana. It's unlike alcohol. It's unlike cocaine. It's unlike you know LSD. Mm -hmm. It's just it's very unique in that way. It sounds like it's yeah. concentrated happiness. Definitely, it was it was a lot of fun. I I wouldn't do it again. Can you get it legally? Mm. Uh, I don't think you can get it legally. I, I've never. It is a drug that like hasn't even been mentioned in any of my social circles like since college. Like I don't know anybody who I really want DMT. That's the next thing that I'm gonna like like try to find a legal ish way to would do travel somewhere, whatever. Um I really wanna see those goddamn gnomes or whatever. You know, and I, I wanna get myself psyched up to see some scary shit before I do it. Like do you believe then, that they all see the same like alien creature or do you think it's like they're all going into a trip experience and people are telling them what they're going to see and they're like planting a seed? So mm -hmm. I've I've seen I, I, I've seen a lot about this. I, I don't know the answer. I think that if you tell somebody, hey, let us know if you see the machine gnomes before they do DMT, then they're probably going to see some machine gnomes. I heard someone say once, maybe on Rogan, that we should find an uncontacted tribe and dose one of those motherfuckers and see what they see because they haven't been influenced by anything that's in our world. And if that's they see idea. the machine Wait. gnomes, then they're fucking real. Wait, Woody, are you still doing the ketamine stuff? Because my audience said that you were doing ketamine therapy. I, yeah, that was it ended though. I call it like nine months ago. I don't remember when. Did you do the thing where it's like six sessions or mm. whatever? Yes. Yeah. It, mind bloom. So you did it at home? Yeah. Okay. And then yeah. and they have you like do a little check in before, right? And then they make sure that there's somebody there to like monitor mm -hmm. you. I looked into that because I was out I, I was dealing so with some, uh, Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry I cut you off. Did you want to finish? No, no, no. no so there's six sessions. Uh uh, I knew nothing about this. Like I, I didn't have any experience. And for me, it was the right way to get started. I needed a tour guide. Other people, maybe you have friends who could guide you through it. And um I was just trying to like work some shit out. So I, you know, even before they like prescribed it, I was like, this is why I'm taking it. I'm trying to sort of sort some shit out, find some happiness and, and wellness. And, and they're like, cool, cool. You seem like a fit. And they prescribed it to me. Um, don't get too caught up in the numbers, but I think this is about right. I think the initial dose was 450, whatever milligrams yeah, or look, something. Oh, and I took it and I enjoyed it. And it was a good experience for me. The beforehand, they had me like take my blood pressure. They set you up. There's some nausea involved. So they give you, I bet Taylor knows. What is the name of the drug that cures? Oh, Meprazole. Maybe, but I'm my, my guess for drug would have been weed. <laughs> well, anyway, there's a there's a something that they take it in advance so that you don't get any nausea. Works perfectly. But my point in bringing that up is they really do this professionally. It's probably more expensive. You put this stuff under your tongue. You wait for like seven minutes, and they give you the audio to listen to while you do it. And a mask, the, right? A sleeping mask? A high-quality sleeping mask. Uh, a blood pressure guide. Uh, there's a therapist, like, sort of getting y'all set up for it. They make sure that you have, uh, like, a babysitter of some sort, you know, to help you do this. And But it's only for the first, like, one or two sessions. And then the other four, you're completely independent, which I like. I On the first one, I was happy to have the help. On the second one, it was sort of a quick check-in. Then after that, I'm a grown-up. Leave me the heck alone. I, I've learned. Up. That would be a good thing to go back to, worshiping the sun and moon. It uses something called gravity that we can, that you can't even explain to me to keep me from hurtling off into the cold beyond. I cannot explain gravity. 
Thank I'm you. fucking We're baffled not alone. By it. They the scientists don't know how to explain it either. I wish they, they could know. teach it better. That like I got the basic That rubber version. tarp doesn't do it for you for real? Cuz I was being silly. I don't get it. I I I get the sphere that draws things to it like a magnet with no polars, right? Just everything gets yeah. sucked into mass. Okay. okay, cool, cool, cool. But then they put the sphere on a tarp and now it sort of dips in and things sort of fall towards it. And I Okay, so I, you're wondering why they don't just all fall to the middle? Why isn't it it's not 3D in their model anymore? It, yeah, they're they're expressing a, a three dimensional problem in a two dimensional way, so you can wrap your head around it. But mm. imagine instead of a flat surface going down, imagine a sphere being drawn inward. You know, if, for, for for those three dimensional scenarios. But the um, how's the, that any different the, than gravity's like a magnet? Yeah, but the it works tarp, in all the tarp omnidirectional thing, magnet. The tarp thing doesn't make sense to me either. Like as mm. an explanation, like no, I understand what they're trying to do, but okay. it's like okay. Well, then what is the, because like a tarp is a medium by which that energy can travel, but there's like nothing in space. So like, what is it acting there's no, on no, 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 no. There's, to there's impact no, another celestial there's no body? Matter there's no matter in tarp. space. There, there, space is, 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 a, is the dimension itself. That's, it's, it's sort of. I thought it was like the absence, like, like there's nothing in space. There's nothing. Yeah, but. So you know, like, but how does fabric it, of reality. How I, does I, it I act? Well, but fabric of reality, what does that really mean? I like don't think that, they know. See, that's what I'm saying. Is like, how does the moon impact some other shit through nothing? You know what I mean? Like the with the tarp, it makes sense because you can see, oh, well, the medium of the tarp shows the flow to the larger mass. But without the tarp there, and if space is like nothing, it's like how are how does gravity work? Well, every and well, well, everything's pulling everything. Yeah, but how? Like, how does it pull? But space isn't nothing. Through the medium of, of like nothing. There's there's gas, dust, wind, particles from stars. Like I, I feel nothing like you're describing though. this like nothing there, but it's not. And they say it's a vacuum. I think there's just no pressure. Like we're accustomed to like whatever one psi or what. It, exactly. it, like we're being pressured. We're in a all bubble the of time. air right now that's that's held here again by gravity. Right, and you don't think about it because you're used to it. But um, if you get into paragliding, you start realizing like how substantial wind is when it pulls your sail around and um uh, but i'm getting off topic space though i think is it's a less dense thing at zero psi but it's not empty i think it is so close to empty that it's mm. empty I i've heard them talk about how close one particle would be from the other of any kind of matter and it's silly it's yeah. an empty empty vacuum so how does when energy you're... travel through hmm. nothing Maybe i'm wrong that's why they like have the the part the particle wave thing with light cuz like oh. a particle can fly through nothing but like a wave needs something to move through. I'm only just now understanding Taylor's conundrum. Like like yeah. he's like how does gravity have a range attack? Yes. You know? Thank you. Thank you for solidifying <laughs> that. Like how does it like if there's like if there's so little in space as to be nothing, I, how does this star act on Jupiter? With like so little in between it, you know what I mean? It's not like water or even I, I, air. I think it is. I think there's a third thing there. But what I is it? I, <laughs> I think that there that. It, Why can't we measure it or put it in a cup? I think the tarp is as close as you're going to get to that representation of of, of what's going on. I love the tarp. The tarp but, to me makes so yeah, much sense. Yeah, I think for Taylor and I, we're like. Mm, I, Ever have someone give you an analogy and you're like, that analogy provided no use to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I wish you just did this with fewer words. That's what the tarp is in my, between my ears. Like, it's just not same. Helping. Like, it's like, what? Okay, of course it makes sense of the tarp. I've seen weight and mass act on fabrics. But like, what's the fabric out there? Yeah. What the, is it that facilitates the, tarp, the movement of energy? The tarp just creates rolling downhill which i already understood yes i'm an expert <laughs> on that <laughs> you put something on us on a hill i'll tell you 1000 percent of the time where it's going to go <laughs> <laughs> down lock me in final answer on down again <laughs> well we should add some uh, some astrophysics to our uh, our quiz questions oh i don't hate that every episode blends together at some point where you just right? yeah i can't remember two weeks ago who we had two weeks ago who we had hutch we have blame truth on the show every so often, and yeah. I think there's some genuine animosity on his side. What's on your side? 
Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I, I gotta, I gotta be honest. Like at this point in my life, I don't have a lot of genuine um, animosity for like anyone. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm getting older. I'm chilling out. So I, okay. I haven't had any kind of interaction with him in quite some time. There was like some effort to build a bridge. And so mm. he has like a podcast where he discusses COD. I think it's called the CODcast. And okay. I went on his podcast and uh, everything was fine. And then there was like a little spat. It's usually about the SBMM stuff and skill-based matchmaking. Yeah, but I, I haven't had any kind of interaction with him in a while. I hope he's doing well. I'm not even being petty or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't have a lot of space for that anymore in my life so yeah i'm not listen i'm not above like being really petty sometimes like i have it in me to be super juvenile and immature but uh, honestly on this part i don't give it a lot of thought and yeah there's not oh, like, yeah. any active hostility every as far time as every time we talk to him he's just like fuck in the hutch <laughs> <laughs> and it yeah. is it's hilarious and because i've never seen such a dispute over something that to me is as retarded as skill-based matchmaking like it's a, yeah. there's no big like it's not like you're arguing over religion or politics I, it's I, like i want lobbies of shitheads that i can just massacre and it's like no you shouldn't have that and it's like <laughs> that is the impetus of a, or at least <laughs> right? i love on, the argument though i don't want to rehash it i don't want to rehash the argument but i love the argument because i see both sides semi-equally mm -hmm. and, and 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 obviously like as a player, you have an opinion, and then if you're asked as, like, hey, this game over here in a vacuum, what do you think it should be like? Maybe you have a different opinion there. So it's a fun thing to hash back and forth. It's a good topic, but he takes it very, very personally, I've noticed. He gets he gets upset about it. Um, we're always telling him you guys should do one of those YouTube boxing matches, but especially <laughs> because of the stature difference. Well, I put on a little bit of weight, a little bit. It all went to my gut, so I'd have to like do some kind of conditioning. But no, I don't of want to. Of course, I'm actually. I, I don't mean six to months and be ready to kill to, to cause trouble. But I think I'm on team blame truth with this one. No, then, Hutch has got the reach advantage by far. He's going to be I, reaching I meant in there. About <laughs> skill based matchmaking, not the fight. Oh, <laughs> I, would, I, I, would, <laughs> I wasn't clear. I would take but, Anthony Anthony over me in a fight. Let's just put that to rest right now. That, that dude is yoked. He got ripped, he bro. Yeah. Yeah. He is ripped now. He's gotten yeah. into fitness. The, I can get you the, the skill matchmaking, in my opinion, I can't play with my friends. My friends are too good, and they ruin it for me. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, mine are too. Didn't used to be that way. Yeah, we we, sp we spoke about friends. this last time. Like, okay. I, and, yeah. I, and I think I think I think like my point that I made back then, and I'll, I'll try to make the point again, like really concisely, is like that is like a really valid perspective. If you're not having a good time, that's your subjective experience. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. But I was yeah. just saying like. If we're expecting video game studios to loosen matchmaking parameters such that it actually eats away at their player base and and drops their player retention that like i assume we're all capitalists here like nobody you know no business owner is going to make a decision that would intentionally drop the player count and i think yeah. like a lot yeah go ahead i was going to interject that a different game with a similar situation is sea of thieves are you familiar with the whole controversy there that that's no. been going on for I'm years. I'm curious though. Tell us. Um, um, who's the fucking? I, I love him on, on Twitch. Summit maybe. Summit. Thank you. Um, yeah. Summit was often at the center of this, but Sea of Thieves has this sort of. It's a pirate simulator at its heart, and it's beautiful to sail in Sea of Thieves with three of your boys. Get, trim the sails to the left. You fucking play your harpsichord, and I'll steer, and <laughs> you get the fucking spyglass up the <clears throat> up the ladder and look for sharks. It's fun. But and a lot of people play it that way, and they, they go through this little story mission. They go fight AI skeletons for these chests of gold. Then they buy fancy sails for their boat, and that's all they want to do. The hardcore players are PvP masters. They know how to like the fastest way, the meta to switch between this gun to that gun to like pop it up, pop, pop, kill yeah, yeah, somebody. Yeah. Like you normally fights take 15 seconds. Summit kills you in two seconds, and you're like, wait, what happened? Then your boy's dead. Then his boy's dead. Then the ship's sinking. Because someone hmm. was asleep in the bottom. Wait, literally camp his character out of sleep in the bottom of your boat and hide till you do three hours of work. Then sink <laughs> your shit, take all your loot, and sail away. Because it's a pirate game. Yeah, Some of those finally, clips are really impressive too. I like it. I don't play the I don't play the game, but I'm watching it, and it's like wild what some of those PvP players are doing with that game. So I think <clears> they finally split the worlds, uh, and they made it so that if you want to be go off and do your thing, you can and. They're making it so if you want to be a sweat lord, you're just going to have to do like PvP basically and fight other people who just want to shoot back and forth. But that's not what piracy is, right? 
piracy at its heart, right. if we're talking about that, let's go pick on the weakest people we can find with the most right. treasure. Let's yeah. find a fat Dutch trading vessel with incense <laughs> in it. True. But, so the, so but, there was a but player was base a, needs to be served. So there there was a matchmaking debate in that community as well. Is that what was going on? A big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Right. I, I don't remember the last time I checked, and some had sworn off the game because of the d developers changing. I think stuff. you could sum it up like this: the herbivores didn't want to play with the predators, mm -hmm. right? The, the cannibals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. and they decided to split the player bases, and I can see why they would. But Kyle's like, in real life. The cannibals don't eat the other cannibals largely they prey on the deer and the cows mm -hmm. and the sheep yeah it yeah. seems like the other people should be playing raft <clears throat> like where you kind of sim city your raft they well, should because raft is fun raft, raft is, is fun. really fun yeah. I'll, although i will say this to you two i don't know if you've ever played sea of thieves but if you role play if you put on your pirate voice you pick out which uh, uh, yeah my guy's got a peg leg for sure i'm i'm, I'm not too agile and like play it that way and go do go, go find it uh bury treasure following maps all around for three hours that shit is really fun yeah and i can't pvp that well anyway not well enough not like them it's scary that was back when you were in your rum drinking phase too oh yeah you get some <laughs> rum you, all right you've got to make yourself some homemade grog when you get out there <laughs> it's a good time it's a yeah, there's a time when pirate game Al couldn't smoke. <laughs> so. yeah, I, think it's, I think it's pretty telling that all of these, like all of these studios, except for like Escape from Tarkov, but like all of these studios eventually get to a place where they add stricter matchmaking. And mm -hmm. the re the re mm -hmm. and the, and some of them have been more like forward about it. Like so um the Fall Guys team of developers, they just straight up said in their Discord, like, look. We get it that our hardcore OG players are finding the game is very sweaty right now and they're not having as good of a time. But what we're observing is that when a new player plays the game and gets stomped out two times in a row, they just in uninstall the game. And mm -hmm. we don't we don't think that's acceptable as a as a as a studio. And so we, they essentially said like we don't really have like a like a choice, you know. Um so yeah, it's it's just you can have your preferences, but if you start like screaming at Infinity Ward for adding skill based matchmaking, I just don't think you're operating in reality. You know, like I don't think you're just <clears throat> acknowledging certain unavoidable truths. I suppose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw a story the other day. <clears throat> Maybe it was fake. I'm gonna pretend like it was real because it's funny. It's more fun the, when it's real. Yeah. The guy said something. He had done something like refurbish and donate a ton of old uh, Xboxes to like this uh this children's hospital and he had loaded them all up with like cod three <laughs> oh, <the worst. laughs> so he could populate lobbies for himself <laughs> oh, i love it <laughs> he's and he's, he's like you guys don't understand it's it's disabled children who've never loaded the game up before <laughs> oh my god <laughs> you can wow. get some sick clips <laughs> That game and is no ass. One, yeah, no one played COD 3 <laughs> even when it came out. Everybody it kept playing COD, COD 1, 2. Actually. It was one of those throwbacks that everybody liked to go back to for COD, COD 2 would fit that description, right? A game you could play multiplayer. It was semi-popular. It was the king before COD 4. Yeah. Like every lobby was a private lobby. So in that in that game, you would go into a lobby and there would be one leader of the part the lobby, and they alone decided, okay, we're gonna play like free for all and we're gonna do it on this map or whatever. Um, yeah. Which, it, are you talking it, about three? COD two. Oh, so I don't it, remember it, it like that. Okay. Yeah, it, it wasn't like matchmaking where you hit find match and it throws you into just like a game where the where the game is doing all that deci deciding. There was like one host that would decide everything. Uh, but this was like this was the really early days of Xbox Live. It was like a launch game. Yeah. I think was was COD two. Yeah, Maybe. I remember in the late days of COD four, you you started playing COD two again, and I'm sure I'm not the only one here. That, that was like, yep, I'll join too. And just and it was the same thing, uh, like just getting slaughtered on some desert map I'd never played before. Yeah. Um, but that was a cool game. Um, if I remember correctly, when you ADS, it's like, and here's your scope. Fuck, that was fast. It was so like fast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the, the reticle on the sniper didn't like meet all the way in the middle. And so you kind of just had to get the guy somewhere in those three because it had the two <laughs> horizontal ones and the bottom for the, one. For the, yeah. For, uh, and you would still kill. I don't remember which gun that was. Yeah, there were like four different snipers and each one had a different reticle. The Springfield had the one that was just a regular cross. And then I think the one you're thinking, I think that was the car. I think that was a car 98. Had that the, may have been it. Because I remember yeah. in private lobbies in COD 2, like the person administering it, or at least among my friends, would be like, 
hey, that's two snipers on one team. Only one sniper per team because they were yeah. far and away so much better than everything else. Shotguns were unusable in that game. Really? And SM or did they have shotguns? I'm thinking maybe I'm thinking SM. Shotguns. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Biden's presidency, he hasn't been that accessible. I I think I like a lot of the policies. I feel like he's doing the right thing. And I'm mostly thinking about Ukraine and now perhaps Israel. I'm a little his foreign undecided. policy I'm on board with. Obviously, economically, if we drew one of those fucking boards, Taylor, just you we'll get to your fucking isolationist. Let's let's all hide out here behind <laughs> What getting health care before we fund more wars? You hated you health care for you. They're not mutually exclusive. <laughs> if we if we stop giving funding to Ukraine tomorrow, it's not like we could summon the political will to get like medical or whatever. We should care. If they can afford it, they've got too much. People talk about it in terms of like, okay, why are we giving this like thirty billion to Ukraine? We we could be doing the homeless vet stuff or whatever. But it's like, if we didn't give any of that money, you would they still have a debate for. in Congress about how that money should be spent. And it's not like that. But it's not we would automatically get health care if we didn't give. No, it if wouldn't it automate, made, you know, but you could get other things for it. You could you could what? not spend hundreds of billions on foreign wars and that don't service the American. What people. are we what are we sacrificing domestically? Give me a specific policy that we don't have because we're giving funding to Ukraine. We have shit tons of inflation. We're printing money. We are we are what, printing wait, wait, billions wait, wait. of dollars. We, there's we, a, we have, there is a global inflation. There are global inflationary pressures going on right now for a variety of reasons, including the we are the, the anchor in, point currency. Like we are the the global currency. Like we are the so you think by, that by like the, Italy the had by it. which all others are compared. And ever since they did the huge COVID stimulus thing and printed shit tons of money, now we're seeing inflation running rampant. The cost of energy, the cost of food, home so ownership, eight percent. Our inflation think, is lower than the rest of the than world. Than every other country in the G7, we fared better than every. Anchor. We we fared better than every other country in the G7. Are we saying that like inflation in Germany is because Joe Biden passed the American Rescue Plan? Is that what you think? No, don't has, forget about Joe Biden and and, and Trump in that. We okay. are we, we print money for businesses. Uh, non-government organizations in the form of the COVID shit where they hand it all out and they send you a little pittance and then we fund infinite wars and we keep printing more and more and more money from the Fed. And what does that do? It obviously causes inflation. And the result of people on the ground here is the cost of food, energy, day-to-day -day purchases. Homeownership has become an impossibility. This shit is not good for the American public. It, the American inflation, it, we're, we, we're back down to like normal levels of inflation. It's been, it had been going down for like the last no, year. No, we're straight. not. That's yes, we not, are. The consumer yeah, price are. index is going through the roof. It's, it's bad. Wait, what? Right. We're talking about inflation right now. The rate of inflation is like, what? Isn't it like less than 3% at this point? We are like back to pre COVID levels, aren't we? It's not down 3%. It's back to like going up a similar amount year over year. So inflation it has gotten rising. worse over the it year. It stopped rising. It rapidly, stopped rising at the absurd money still isn't rapid worth rates. Anything. But it's still worth way less than it was. Your, your money didn't gain its value back. We peaked at yeah. 9% inflation. No, obviously that it's not that's not how inflation works. Obviously like that th these are the new levels or whatever. But the yeah, fact that's, that's that bad. That's 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 a, that's a big thing. Yeah, like, inflation's worse. And okay. I I'm not a good enough economist to explain why, but deflation is a catastrophe. I, we we saw tons it. of inflation in this country because the the, the 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 vaccine was distributed. We started to get back to like normalcy or whatever. All of a sudden, demand skyrocketed for uh, goods that had been sort of shuttered during the pandemic. These companies, especially like energy, like the, we had this enormous demand for oil. All of us, all of a sudden, and we didn't have the infrastructure in place to actually account for that. So the spot, the price of that skyrocketed. Like, there's so many reasons why global inflation occurred, and then you had oil uh, uh, pressure on the oil prices because of the conflict in Ukraine, and that had an effect, like uh, literally all over the world. And then you, ha you also have organization or uh, uh, okay. OPEC, right? OPEC was was making the decision to deliberately like hamper the supply of oil so they could manipulate the price. Yeah. In their favor. There's I, all kinds in, of reasons. In, in like in the real day-to-day -day world, middle class people are getting fucked. Home ownership has become an impossibility for a lot of people. Homes are more expensive than ever in real dollars, and the rates you're getting are above eight percent now. It's okay, but how horrible. is not how is not giving Ukraine, you know, thirty billion dollars or whatever, or fifty for a hundred billion dollars? How is that going to help with that inflation? What do you what do you? We what could spend it on anything else. Let's use healthcare like as an as, as an example. Would we rather have healthcare, universal healthcare, or would we rather fund Ukraine or Israel or whatever the new thing's going to be? 
Ideally, you would do. You could do both. No, like, ideally, I, I, we take care of our own here before we start sending out shit tons of money. It just depends. Do you think like liberal democracy is something that's like w w worth trying to protect in that region? And, like, I, I, some people I are going to say not, no. Some people are saying yes. I really don't care about Russia or Ukraine or the or the Middle East at all. Like I care about Americans and making homeownership a possibility, having food and fuel and cars and these things be available to the average person where people aren't working five gig economy jobs trying to make things make, make ends meet. Like it's just not a good use of our resources. And we do it over and over and over. What was the end result of Afghanistan? Trillions of dollars wasted, millions of lives lost and the American public gets bucked. It was one trillion. Yeah. <laughs> it was one trillion. You can act like a trillion. There's a big a difference between one and two. Yeah. <laughs> and then like in, and among like among normal like not like like people who aren't online all the time most people are infinitely more concerned with inflation and the cost of goods and services rising in a way that's totally unsustainable wages stagnating or going that's down that's why Donald Trump's going to win then yeah then they are about Ukraine or the Middle East like n most people aren't stoked on that like when you talk to day-to-day -day people for the most part they're not like yes more money to Ukraine they're like, I can't afford a home. It was I lost my job. It was funding for for Ukraine was initially popular. I think it recently dipped down just slightly yeah. below fifty percent. Um, I, I think could it's be, I could be wrong. Well that. enough. Yeah, like it, it's the sports thing, right? When the Eagles win, winner, we part. won. When the Eagles lose, they lost, <laughs> and and that's what's happening with Ukraine. Like you, dude, you got to start. If you measure your territory gained in meters per week. You're going to lose the support of the people funding it. You need to be a bigger winner than that. Uh, on to Taylor's points. Uh, your points sound great, but I think a lot of it is on the strength of your speaking and debating skills. But when you say stuff like, I want inflation to go down and I want interest rates to go down, those are like in contrast with each other. Rising interest rates are why inflation rate went down. You can't have both. If you want inflation to go back up, you'll lower interest. I understand what you're saying. I just mm. don't see a purpose in funding infinite war. Like, I feel like we've learned this lesson. I feel like we're going to kick another football to have it removed again. I strongly disagree that we've learned any lessons. We don't yeah, do that clear, here. Clearly, we haven't learned any lessons because we're about to fund Israel with a bunch of money. Imagine keep funding you. The writing's on the wall. It you doesn't, can see it doesn't the help Americans. Forward. Our government should, should exist to service Americans. It's our government. We should be the number one through 100 priority. And so when our country's not going well, and economically, the average person is struggling immensely, that should be the priority. I would like somebody in power to better articulate what we get from this. Now, regular listeners know I'm pro-Ukraine, right? I've always been that way, and I haven't changed my mind. But can someone concisely and effectively explain what America gets out of Ukraine? You know, Lindsey Graham gives it a try. He's like, yeah, we wiped out half of Russians' tanks for two percent of our uh, military budget. It's the best money I ever spent. Like that's what Lindsey Graham says. And I'm like, all right, I I get you, that. You also have, you also have to imagine a world where nobody supported Ukraine and mm -hmm. Russia just rolled through and annexed the entire region. In what universe is Vladimir Putin going to stop with Ukraine? At least now, if you make right. him pay a price, political, and if you make him pay like a financial price and a, and a price in like human lives, uh, that he that will make him. That will make him. You think he would have tried and, to like conquer Germany? I don't. I don't think he would have started Germany. Germany. He'd have, like, he'd have started. I think he'd have gone down there to those tiny countries right below Poland, one of those tiny little countries, and 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 done something there. And, and then also, like, what, 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 what do you think? Xi, what do you think Xi Jinping's going to do in Taiwan if he if he watches Vladimir Putin walk into Ukraine unopposed and like there's no international support? Then I, mean, then I, 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 I don't to say that Putin not would business. stop is like, well, you're not watching. He took Crimea. He, 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 he invaded years, Georgia and in like he invaded Georgia in like 2004. Invaded Crimea. Like he's clearly he's just he's gone on the record as saying like the dissolution of the 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 USSR, USSR was the worst mistake that they ever made. Like he he doesn't believe that they should have done that. So like he's very open and explicit about his goals of expansion. Yeah. Um, and I just don't think that you can allow someone like that to to enact that kind of a. Uh, a, a military campaign without any kind of international support. And so, you know, I, I think I, that I comes so far down the list after 
you after still need to get a, you st- but you still need to get stimulating the, vote. the economy too you, you still need to get the vote <laughs> if you want to do universal health care instead of ukraine okay it. fine show me, show me show me where the votes are you need 60 votes in the senate can you can you get 60 votes in the senate for for a health care bill well just because you can't get it right now doesn't mean okay well then just print infinite money and give it to ukraine and give it to israel and give it to taiwan or whatever like that's I mean, not that doesn't help us that doesn't help american people I don't think they're printing infinite money. It's, it represents such a small part of our federal budget. It's pennies. Like it's not a lot of money compared. And a lot the money that the 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 aid package that we're giving to Ukraine. It's not like we're just giving them like 110 billion dollars in cash. Most of that comes in the form of like equipment that we weren't even using. And so then we like, and then we're gonna give more of our tax dollars to get more backfill for equipment, equipment for us through Raytheon. Well, we were gonna and do that anyway, that. Taylor. Yeah. I think that's the yeah. thing that's largely misunderstood. Like if we give an 18-year-old Humvee to Ukraine, well shit, we were gonna like melt it down anyway. We we don't go to war oh, with that's 25 example. year old Humvees. Did you see recently that so we recently gave the Ukrainians those Attackums missiles that we've been yes. holding off on Attackums? forever? It's a yeah. acronym. Um, it's great though <laughs> they go very 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 far hundreds of miles of range and uh i guess 